This is my GMC MS190 Mitosaur. Imaginatively named because it's a Mitosaur and it takes a 190mm blade. Anyway, it's got some issues. Firstly, it sounds like this. I'm hoping the noise is the bearings, but it could be the gears. The fence is completely out of alignment. If I side along the fence or hold up a square to each side, you can see how bad the problem is. Sorry about these shots being out of focus, by the way. And looking at the bottom, you can see the problem. It's actually bent up in the middle. You can see with these test cuts how far off square they are, and there's also a little nub in the corner where the blade doesn't go through the whole way. Finally, it has this locking pin for securing it closed, which is handy for storage or moving it around. but when the blade's tilted, the vibrations of the saw make it fall into the hole, preventing me from taking a cut. We'll start by taking the blade cover and blade off. This is a left hand thread. Then I'll loosen the movable blade cover. Ah, my old nemesis, shielded metal bearings. The lever arm for the cover is riveted into position, so I'll just get it out of the way and leave it attached. Then I can remove the motor. and the gearbox. Ugh, that's some nasty looking grease. Disassembling the gearbox starts with removing this circlet, then pushing the gear off the arbor on the poor man's press. I pop the bolt back in a couple of turns to give something to press against and push the bearing off the arbor. Moving our attention to the motor, I'm pulling the brush cover off to have a look at the brushes. They seem to be in good condition so I'll leave them alone. Then the arbor gets pulled out of the stator. All the bearings seem quite loose and definitely noisy. We'll have to employ the real press to get the bearings off the arbor. Now whenever I order bearings or parts like this, I always like to get a few at a time, 10 in this case. And it just means that you can keep them in stock and these parts are often quite similar across a number of different uh, machines and then when you need them the next time you don't have to wait for the order to come through. I think I've mentioned this in a previous video too. If you're using bearings in a high dust environment you do want to replace them with a rubber sealed which is designated as 2RS rather than the metal shielded version which is designated as Z. I think these ones are just cheaper to manufacture and that's why they're in all of the tools from the factory but these ones do a much better job at keeping dust out and so in something like a saw 
they work a lot better. I gave all the gearbox parts a bath in some diesel. They all look fine except the main bearing does have some damaged teeth. I'm assuming it's a combination of the loose bearings and poor grease that's caused this wear. Obviously in an ideal world I'd replace the gear, however I don't know if replacements exist for this saw and if they did they'd far exceed the value of the whole thing. So instead I'm going to try and file the sharp edges off to prevent further wear and hope for the best. I'm using the press to push all of the bearings and the old parts back together. I still haven't quite learned to film the press action without getting my hands in the way. I'm re-greasing the gearbox with some high temp wheel bearing grease. I'll come back to it after an hour or so of use and pack some more in if I need to, but I didn't want to overfill it to start with. When I pulled it apart, I noticed that one of the threaded inserts on the blade guard was broken and about to fall out, so I'll fix that with some two-part epoxy while I'm in here. With everything that I'm prepared to replace replaced, I can put the gearbox and motor back together and turn my attention to the fence. The fence is aluminium. I'm clamping it to a 20mm thick flat plate of slate on the side that will support the work and then checking it on the bottom with a straight edge. Once I've got it right, I'm getting it smoking hot with map gas to take the bend out of it. While I wait for that to cool slowly, I'm going to take a look at the miter table. Honestly, there wasn't much to this. I just pulled it apart, gave it a clean, put a bit of silicon lube on the spindle and put it back together. I think the main issue was the nylock nut was too tight on the spring washer, so setting that correctly probably did more to fix the issue than anything else. I do like this handy little feature to quickly set common angles though. I figured I should give the table a quick clean with some metho. It didn't do much though. If you're wondering what happened to the plastic insert, well, someone used this saw with an abrasive blade to cut pipe for an exhaust. Whilst I had everything apart, I figured it was a good idea to pop a blade in and reset the 0 and 45 degree stops on the tilting miter. These are just a grub screw with a lock nut that you screw in and out, and I'm checking the blade against the table with a quick square. There's one more grub screw that controls the depth of cut. I'm adjusting this one slightly to get rid of that annoying little corner. The fence is cool, so I'll take that off the slate. 
It's got a teensy bit of wobble, but it's fine for what I'll be using it for. Way better than it was. What I'm trying to show here with my terrible handheld camera work is the reason it bent in the first place. The holes in the fence are too far apart for the threaded holes in the base, and when someone forced the screws in, it kinked up in the center. There's plenty of meat in the fence, so I'll just enlarge the holes. I started trying to do it neatly with a small file, but quickly got over it and just went ham with a large drill bit. It caught a bit, it's sharpened for steel, but it worked fine in the end. There's a bit of play in the holes, even before I enlarge them, so here I'm just making sure that the fence is square to the blade before tightening it down. With that done, I can put everything back together for the last time, and put a little spring on the locking pin to stop it falling in the hole when I don't want it to. And it sounds... Basically the same. Obviously the poor gears were contributing more to the noise than the bearings. Ah well, at least I know it's better than it was. The rest of the fixes were a huge success though. You can see with the test cuts just how square everything is now. I get that this is a super cheap and out of date saw and I probably could have thrown it out and bought a new one that worked just fine for barely any money, but I like fixing up these old things and bringing new life back into dead tools, even if they're not particularly valuable or sought after. Not to mention I find the whole process a lot of fun and I learn something new every time. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.